This video examines dynamic graphical user interface creation in Android. The objectives are listed here with a timeline for when they appear in the video. Okay, for this demo, you should already have an uh, understanding of how to do a basic XML based uh, graphical user interface in Android. And all I've done to prepare for this is I've created a Eclipse project called GUI Dynamic Demo. I've got the free, free Hello World out of the box, unmodified. That's the only thing I've done is created that and given it the package name of com.professorandroid GUI Dynamic Demo. I forgot to rename this main activity, which I always like to do. And um, so I didn't do that in the wizard. How can I do that now? Well, if I want to call that main activity, which is my default naming convention, I can go down here to refactor, rename, and rename this main activity. And leave the update references checked. And that'll update everything. Now note, even in the Android manifest file, that we know has to reference that activity, it found that and also renamed it main activity. So that's a very good renaming utility. It actually went out and also renamed it in the manifest file. So let's just say I purposely named that incorrectly to show you that feature. So um, again, now we're going to look at how to dynamically create a graphical user interface. This is not going to be our mode of operation throughout these videos. But those of you that came from a swing and AWT background in Java, you know this was your default way of being doing business. And it'd be helpful to at least have us know that this is possible while it won't be the focus of the class. So how do we do this? Well, what I want to do is start by coming into our resource folder layouts, I'm looking at our graphical user interface that we get for free. Let me just give some magnification to that so we can see it a little better. And so let's start out by making a very simple application in the XML file by coming in here and changing a few things around. I'm going to go into XML view and say without externalizing strings Enter your name for our edit text, or I should say our text view. And now, now that we've done that, we'll come into the graphical mode and drop a text box in there. And we'll come back and modify that and call it edit text name. And let's just go ahead and call this first name. and call this first name. And then the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and throw a button on there. So the form widgets, a button. We'll make that button span the whole width of our activity by saying match parent. Come in there in XML mode and call it button click me. And I'm getting that little artifact there where it's showing two at once. If I save that, exit out of it, and double click on it again, that generally fixes it. Uh, button click me. And just say click me. And you know the next thing we need to do is we can wire up that on click event by saying Android on click equals button click me, my convention, underscore on click. And then the last thing we want to do is actually make this do something. So maybe I'll come in here to the graphical view and also drag and drop a label on there with some room for some text. And we'll go text view results. We're just making a modified version of a simple hello program, hello world program. Of course, the last thing we need to do to wire that up, my mode of operation is I come in here and say, here's the name of my on click method, copy. 
come over and go to my activity and then put in my on click method by saying public void we know it needs to pass in a view v and then we need to hit what I like to do to get these imports done is control shift o automatically imports the imports for us so that's done and then we know we need to get a handle on our uh, label and a handle on our text view and so we made snippets for that previously so if I come in here and say window show view other and put my snippets window up and I'm going to drag and drop that up here and we know if we have an edit text and a text view from our previously defined snippets, we can go ahead and um, use those to save ourselves some typing. So if I go back to my XML file, I'm going to say the first thing I want to grab is my edit text for first name. I'm going to copy and paste that. Go back to my activity, double click on the snippet for edit text, pop in the name of the variable, and say insert, and it automatically did the import, or automatically wrote that line of code, I should say. Control shift o to over organize my imports. Now we look back in our XML file and go, what's the other thing we need to grab from our XML-based layout was the text view for results. So we grab that, go back to our activity and double click on text view, paste that in from our previously defined snippet and say insert and we got some help lighting that line of code. Again, control shift o organize the imports and all those imports were done for us automatically then. So now we've got the two things we need in order to make this work and the last thing we're going to do is just say TV results dot set the text to the first name dot get text How are you? We'll pretend we care today. Okay. And now we have a functioning cute little hello world program. Let's just make sure this works. I'm going to fire up my emulator. I haven't done that yet. Quick start and scale mine to seven inches because I'm running on a smaller screen size. Okay, my emulator's building. Okay, let's run that up to our now built emulator. Type in Sally, click Sally, how are you? A fine application ready to move up onto the App Store. Again, if it was only that easy. Dave, Dave, how are you? Okay, so we have that built, but the main purpose of this demo is to say, how could I create this graphical user interface completely dynamically, completely bypassing the XML file that we worked with? More like Java, AWT and Swing before you ever knew about Android. How is that done? So what we do is we come in here to the main activity and we go let's get rid of the set content because that's the line of code that actually goes out and looks at this XML file and does a process of what we call inflating it, bringing it into memory and creating that graphical user interface. So if we used to inflate that file right there we have to replace it with all the Java code. And all this set content view is really doing is looking at this XML file and dynamically generating the Java code that's creating the graphical user interface for us. So if we're going to bypass using the XML file or we need to do something dynamic because we don't know what it's going to look like until runtime, then we would need to get in here and do some dynamic GUI work. So let's, So our purpose now is to say let's create this graphical user interface without using that XML file at all. How will that happen? Commented it out already. So let's go back and look at that XML file though and start there. Well we see that we have a linear layout as the root node in this graphical user interface. So if we're not going to get it by defining it in the XML file, we're going to have to create this linear layout ourselves. And I like to call that the root linear layout. So 
let's come in here and say, I got to create that myself. So we're going to go, I need a linear layout. And I'm going to call it linear layout root because it's my root node equals a new linear layout. 